Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope you're having an amazing day. Now I'm in the polytunnel and I'm having a bit of a, a sort of early fall, late summer, sort of spring clean around. And as you can see, I have the broom there and I have all the soil on the floor. I'm giving a bit of a cleaner up and sort of checking all the plants for bugs. But I'm actually going to be um, having a bit of a move around. I'll show you the dilemma I have here. I've got my um, Cal and Coe uh, Mother of Thousands, the Degre Montiana, which is this one here, all here, and the Tubiflora, and they've got quite a few of these different ones. And as you can see, the Tubiflora is completely hitting the, um, the roof of the polytunnel. And also we have all our punchers here that are looking a little bit overcrowded. They've grown quite a lot over the summer because we've had an amazing summer for the weather. And we need more space, so... These are hitting the ceiling and these need to be more space around and to be spread out. So what I'm going to be doing is moving these calancoes and um, I'm going to be then spreading the punchers over the rest of the side here. So giving the punchers a lot more space, space to grow. And they'll also look a lot more aesthetically pleasing to the eye at the moment. It's a bit like an apuncture jungle. <laughs> so it's going to look a lot better. And also I'll just show you here underneath. This is our wooden table that we have um, look at the state of it it's collapsing so that obviously has to go and I'm going to be um, replacing it with one of these other metal um, tables um, with the plastic coat cover because that stops them from water damage and um, they're easy from eBay or Amazon I can't remember now but I'm going to be we're going to be getting another one of them to fit in that corner to replace that old wooden table and uh, wood is never a good idea to have in a polytunnel or greenhouse because of water, obviously. So either go for metal one or plastic. So that's going. But in the meantime, I'm going to be able to spread these across onto, onto here. And so I'm going to be moving these. And I'm just doing this a bit of a video vlog to show you what I'm going to be doing. And what I'm going to be doing then is moving the Calancoe tubifloras and the um, Degramantianas, the mother of a thousand plants, into this corner here. Now this plant stand at the back here, as you can see, there's not really much on it. There's just a few cuttings there that are sort of need a bit of shade, but they can go under the table under here to, to carry on rooting. And then I have a couple of aloes. This here is Hans's incredible aloe vera that he's had for many, many years. It's an absolutely beautiful specimen. But as you can see, it's also touching, touching the roof. And when we get wind, because we have a polytunnel, um, it does wobble and it's sort of bounced off a few times. <laughs> it's, it's a very strong, sturdy plant but obviously it does need probably best going on the floor so we're going to be moving that and possibly putting that in that corner there next to the lovely clerodendron and the collius it's going to fit perfect there as well and it's going to look really beautiful it'll have loads of loads of room to grow and you'll have the lovely energy coming from that lovely crystal there that we've got this is actually one that i found myself when i was walking the um, the mountains here in ireland it was actually on the west coast of ireland in uh, county sligo and i lived in sligo so isn't that beautiful this is actual rock covered with beautiful quartz crystals that I found myself and it's very special <laughs> and uh, I just love it there in the polyton it just and when the sun comes in it glistens like diamonds so the aloe vera big aloe vera can go there uh, they're going to be then moving this little plant stand because we, as I say there's not really much on it there I'm going to be putting that possibly into the yard here where we have a lot of all our outdoor cacti that are outdoors um, at this time of year and we have growing a load of little little oaks here and some different types of garden plants so that plant stand could go in the corner and the plants can go on that which is going to be really handy and um, because the plant stand is wrought iron it's going to be absolutely fine to have outdoors so that's going to be handy for that and I'd say this then going to free this corner up completely this stand here is great there and it's great for, for holding a lot of the a lot of the plants so that's going to stay there but obviously I'm going to have to take everything off and um, then put the calancos in there and then put this back again but also want to make sure that I'm going to be able to go in into the uh, corner to water the calancoe tubiflora and the, and the degre Montiana. so that's the dilemma I've got um, at the moment I have no trouble watering even these because I have a longer to show you what I use here this is um Oh, actually I've moved it out, I think it is, yep, here it is. One of these big green blade things and these reach all the parts that you, you can't normally reach with a watering can, so they're great. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to be doing with that afterwards. So 
as long as I can get my hand in, which I can now. So it should be just the same when um, I've moved the big aloe vera. So that's what it looks like now, guys. I'm going to show you what it looks like uh, sort of when I'm in between moving everything. As I say, this is a bit more of a, a little bit of a video vlog of me rearranging a few things here in the polytunnel. By the way, guys, I just have to show you this. This is um, Hans's gorgeous Apelia. A grandiflora and look at that it's the most gorgeous flower and a fly has been on this all morning laying its larvae because it's been tricked into thinking it's uh, it's raw flesh because the pelia flowers smell like rotting flesh and the color as well attracts flies so they lay their larvae and um, by the way the larvae never never lives because once once they sort of hatch they um, they die because it's not real flesh and it's flying off. Just wanted to show that beautiful. I've done a separate video on that, so stay tuned for that beautiful, beautiful video of the Stapelia coming soon. And these are um, our tomato plants. So I know they're not cacti and succulents, but we're making the most of the polytunnel because the polytunnel is very, very wide. So we have all this space in the middle. Now we've got all the big, tall, serious plants outside for the summer. We have all this space free, so it's great for growing vegetables and things. So we have, um, have the tomatoes in here, and obviously they're going to be dying back then. For, for the winter and then we put all the big serious cacti back in there again and keep everything dry to over winter and uh, but uh, if you wonder what these are these aren't marijuana plants <laughs> these are tomato plants I'll just show you they're really cute look at the little tomatoes growing on them they're gorgeous aren't they anyway <laughs> enough of my waffle let's get back on to what I was what I was talking about and that's moving the the big aloe vera and uh, moving all the calanchoe mother of thousands at the top now that's the um, plant stand taken away and the big uh, aloe vera there outside and as I say I'm going to be moving then that into this corner here. I've got the big big plant stand here. I've kept the little air plant, the uh, Tillandsia cacticola there. As you can see it's coming into an amazing flower bud which is really exciting and um, I give this a, a good spray with water daily. It seems to be doing very well. I'm going to give it another spray. Another spray when I put everything back again. And as I say, I'm going to give this a bit of a broom now and um, show you what it looks like when I've, uh, well, yeah, when I start to put the um, big Calanchoe tubiflora and De Degramantianas away. Now that's the, the black tray down there to um, put the um, big Calanchoes on. So um, that's that down. And now to go and move these big fellas over here. So I just, oops. Obviously, I'm going to get the, the big tallest ones at the back first. These are the Kalanchoe tubifloras that have the um, long slender leaves with their little babies are growing at the very, very tips. And these little babies fall off really easy and root all over your plants. So you do have to be careful. And also because they fall off so easy, I'm going to be careful moving these because I actually love them when I have the little babies all growing on the end like that. They look so cute. So um, obviously, I'm going to have to... Um, move them across. I'm going to put the camera down now. I'm going to show you what it looks like when I first put the bigger ones towards the back. Now that's all the um, mother of thousands, the Kalanchoes, all put on the tray here. And um, now I'm going to be giving them all a really good water and then moving the uh, water iron stand back in its place. And because the water iron stand is obviously, um, there's, there's light going through. Um, it's going to, they're still going to get plenty of light and Cal and Coe actually prefer to have a bit more of a semi-light position because when I had them in direct sun over there before a lot of them went a bit red and a little bit, little bit yellow so this should be a better spot for them they should have a slightly more shade and um, as I say, I'm going to give them all a good water. I just mentioned there's three different types here. This is um, the Calanchoe tubiflora times um, De Gremantiano. It's like a hybrid between the two. This one is the more traditional mother of thousands, the Calanchoe De Gremantiana. And this one is the tubiflora. As I say, this is my big, big plant here, which is quite tall. It's actually about three foot high, so it's it's gorgeous. And it's flowered them on and off in the past past couple of years, so that's very good. And as I say, very easy to propagate purely by... Um, 
by the little planters. You just gently place them on top of the soil and they root like lightning. And if you want to know how to propagate Mother of Thousands, just out of curiosity, <laughs> it's so easy, but a link's up above to a video I made on when I um, show you the stages that actually first sow the little tiny little plantlets. And over the um, following weeks and months to when they're big plants and when I pop them all up, it's just a little bit of a video vlog if you're interested. Link's up above to that um, video. Just click on the little, the little sign at the top and um, on the right hand side and it should take you to the video and saying give these a good water now and um, then move the plant stand back now that's them all watered. I actually forgot to mention guys that I big, have the big mummy mummy mother of thousands um, the one I had for the very first time now this plant here is probably about four years old and it's flowered many times they say that once it flowers it dies but it's not actually true because I've still got the original plant here and um, as I say, it just flowers, and once the flowers die off, it also forms little plantlets as well. Um, the plant never looks its best. Now, so, funny enough, the, the strange thing is I do have some other thousands of plants that do have died after flowering. Not the actual plant as such. Um, the main mother plant dies, but it's formed little plantlets come up from the base as well. Um, but this actual plant is actually the original plant, and it has flowered many times, and it's still going, so um, it's good to see. <laughs> so very interesting there. A lot of people say, Say, say different but um, that's the case with this plant anyway and uh, as I see it's a big big mummy plant there look how lovely and wide the leaves are it's beautiful obviously that doesn't fit in the corner so that's going to be going uh, onto probably a little probably a little stand into the other part of the polytunnel now that's the plant stand put back and as you can see there's loads of space for me to to walk right through there and um, water these plants so no problem there and because it's more of a, of a wrought iron sort of cage it lets the light straight through i'm just going to give our tillandsia cacticola here a very good spurt with uh, with rainwater just use this little water spray here and then give it a bit of a soak in i sort of avoid avoid the flower some people say you can spray the flower bud but just to avoid that just give it a very very thorough soaking as i said the humidity is pretty high at the moment here in uh, in northern ireland it's uh, we've had really good high temperatures and we've had a wonderful summer but um we've had a lot of rain for the past past couple of weeks now and it's very 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 humid so i would not be spraying this permanently just give it a good a good spray now um, normally when it was very hot i'll spray it every day but no, I mean, like just a couple of days. It seems to be doing well. I like to spray the air plants till they drip, as you can see, they're dripping from the base. And, um, whoops, sorry, <laughs> that um, will dry out pretty quick in here. So that's that's that done. And um, as I say, now I'm going to be putting the plants back that were on here back onto the plant stand. That's all the plant stand all completed and I've got the big um, the big Cactus candelia back where it was on the top there and as I say the Tillandsia cactifolia there in the corner and here we have the um, Raybutias, Lobivias and Camaceres is there and this one here I've, the reason why I've got them all in this tray is I've got all pots I'm going to be repotting a lot of these as you can see they're in tiny 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 pots and I've treated them all with neem oil the other week because I found spider mite on them so they've been treated but I'm going to be potting them up into um, these little pots the next size up so stay tuned for a video probably coming up in the next probably the next week or two when I get when I get time off next um, to repot these and I'll share the repotting of these all little chamaserious different varieties with you all and um, here we've got another aloe there and um, some seedlings that I've grown from seed this is Cactus eugenis that I grew from seed in 2016 and here is um, Neo Books Barbia Polylophus that I grew these from seed also back in I think it was 2015 or so when was it now uh, 2016 yep so that's them there doing well little cute little seedlings and um, some more here I have got some Cory Panther Borwigii seedlings that I sowed in 2015 and um, Lobivia acursii also that I grew in 2015 these were the actual seeds that 
I actually sewed when I made um, the video how to grow cacti from seed and this is them now. So if you haven't seen that video and you're curious about how to grow cacti from seed or how I grow cacti from seed, everyone has their own, own their different ways. Um, please do check that video out if you want to know and um, it's very easy to do. May not be the best time of year now, it's coming towards the end of the summer. But if you have grow lamps and additional heat for the winter, you can sew them now. And if not, it's best to wait probably till the following spring. And um, here are the Chlamys uh, cactus ones. Now these are my um, Chamaserius um, Silvestri eyes. And this particular one here is one that was the very, very, very first cactus I ever had, ever in my life and I was I think 11 years old and a very 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 long time ago now <laughs> and um, it is doing really well but those of you who follow my videos probably know that um, I had a, nearly lost this plant um, a good few months ago when it came down with a very bad infestation of um, mealybug and I had to dissect every single little tiny peanut stem um, completely cleared it with um, isopropyl alcohol everything off and um, now I treated it with um, neem oil which I regularly spray with neem um, every month or so and it's kept it at bay and it's actually really doing really well and um, it has come in flower and bud this year so it's made a remarkable recovery and this is another one um, I haven't had as long but I still had a long time it's it's similar to the, the traditional Camacera silvestrii but it has longer peanut stems as you can see there the stems are longer on this one as this is more short and stubby this is the very true one um, which as you see many 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 hybrids now which are all these here <laughs> so guys that's um that's the standard now i've just left with this the big aloe this is hansi's aloe and Hansi's away at the moment he um he works as a musician and he's with his band in the, the floor festival um here in uh, here in ireland it's in drogheda and he's doing that so he's playing um very busy uh, gigging away there for the past three days so he's been he's been a busy bee and i've left him doing a bit of time to doing a few jobs in the polytunnel as uh, i say been very busy i'm going to be just pruning these off here now and then um, putting this into the corner there you go guys i've got the old big mother of thousands calanco de montiana here in the corner with the clerodendrum and the coleus so that's going to be good there i'm going to give her a good water now and then i've got the big aloe um Hansi's big aloe here with um next to all the other aloes on the table there so it's going to get plenty of sunshine and it's going to thrive and i put a lovely big um spotted fossil rock on there to support her and um, that's all the the plants stand there and then this back table as i say this isn't going to be done overnight though because i'm going to need Hansi's help with this because i'll have to wait till he's back this um table here is going to be replaced i'm going to plastic sturdy table and then we're going to be spreading the apuntures over there giving a lot more room so stay tuned for a future vlog when we do that probably won't be now for another couple of weeks or so until um until we get get time obviously so i hope you enjoyed the little bit of a video vlog and what i've been doing today on this busy busy warm very humid sunday and um, i want to thank you guys so much for all your incredible comments and all of your support i can't thank you enough i don't always have time to get back and reply because it's just so so busy at the moment and also um please do follow me on instagram if you're on instagram um desert plants of avalon just type that in and i should come up and um Thank you. I've been having lots of private messages on Instagram, which is really, really, really lovely. But I'm so sorry, guys, that I'm not able to get back and reply to you because there's just so many. And I have about 30 or 40 a day. And I started off replying and, oh, thank you so much and everything. But um, I just don't have the time. And that between my YouTube channel and my website and Twitter and Facebook. I have three Facebook accounts. I run the Island Cactus um, Facebook page. I run my own personal one. And I also run Desert Plants of Avalon and a few other sort of forums as well so i'm just flat out guys and on top trying to get everything done around the house and the home and um but then went off my waffle <laughs> thanks so much for all your support guys and i want to send you loads of love heaps of happiness and tons and tons of cactus and plant power as always from the emerald isle until the next video